On February 5th, 1887, 137 years ago today, Giuseppe Verdi's 25th and second to last opera, Otello, received its premiere at the Teatro alla Scala in Milan. The premiere was the single greatest triumph in Verdi's sensational career, but it was a premiere and an opera that was a long time coming. The Galley Slave. No composer ever worked harder than did Giuseppe Verdi, 1813 to 1901. In the 14 years between 1839 and 1853, he composed 19 operas. Verdi called these his galley slave years because he worked like one, 16 to 18 hours a day, always under deadline, endlessly harried by librettists, producers, singers, critics, and conductors, always emotionally depressed and physically ill with some bug or another. According to Verdi, he hated the whole stinking opera trip. And as early as 1845, at the age of just 32, he was already thinking about retirement. On November 5th, 1845, he wrote this to a friend in Rome, quote, Thanks for remembering your poor friend, condemned to continually scribbling notes. God save the ears of every good Christian from having to listen to them. How am I, physically and spiritually? Physically I am well, but my mind is black always black, and will be so until I have finished with this career that I hate. Retirement at last. As it turned out, it wasn't until late 1875 that the now 62-year-old Verdi, still in his prime and at the top of his game, dropped his thunderbolt and did the unthinkable. He informed his nearest and dearest, his second wife, his friends, and his publisher, that as a composer, he was through. After 24 operas and one requiem, Giuseppe Fortunino Francesco Verdi was done, finito. With a sigh of relief likely heard across the entire Italian peninsula, Verdi sat down on his recliner, put up his dogs, and settled down on his estate called Sant'Agata, just outside the town of Buzetto in his native province of Parma in north central Italy. To a friend, Verdi wrote, Now that I am not manufacturing any more notes, I am planting cabbages and beans, etc. But since this work is no longer enough to keep me busy, I have begun to hunt. That means that when I see a bird, poof! I shoot it. If I hit it, fine. If I don't hit it, also fine. As it turned out, the only person happy about Verdi's retirement was Giuseppe Verdi himself. Verdi's second wife, Giuseppina Straponi, now isn't that cute, Giuseppe and Giuseppina, was not at all pleased about having her cantankerous husband underfoot all day. Giuseppina, who was herself a retired opera singer, also understood that her husband's retreat from opera denied the opera-going public the further fruits of his genius. And Giuseppina was not alone in this. Verdi's publisher, his friends and colleagues, the general population of Italy, and opera lovers everywhere across the globe believed his retirement to be un disastro, a disaster. For four years, Verdi happily puttered about his estate, buying additional tracts of land, experimenting with new crops and animal husbandry, making additions to his sprawling house, shooting birds, or at least attempting to shoot birds, with his custom-made shotguns, and generally living a life that seemed to suit him entirely. But then there was the plot. Verdi's absence from the opera stage might have made him a happy camper, but had created an artistic and economic vacuum in the Italian opera industry that no one else could possibly fill. Verdi was in fact still 
still in his prime. So as far as the people around him were concerned, by 1879 it was time for him to get back to work. So it was that in that year a plot was hatched that intended nothing less than to get Verdi back to composing opera. To find out what happened and how Verdi was indeed convinced to return to composing operas? Well, please join me on the Music History Monday podcast, which can be found on all podcast platforms, or enjoy the illustrated, full-text, ad-free version of this blog and much more on my Patreon channel.